Rip Trippers used to get millions of views per video, but now struggles to pull 10,000 views on a good day. A series of poor decisions and a changing YouTube landscape has left Rip Trippers' career up in smoke. How did the man that won the hearts of an entire industry become one of the most hated content creators of all time? Starting at the humble beginnings, Rip Trippers would create his YouTube channel on April 18th of 2012 and would post his first video to the channel only six days later. The channel was started as a review channel for the topic of vaping which at the time was just ramping up in popularity. Starting off his career, he would begin reviewing these products in his bedroom and displayed a very likable and relatable personality. Not even Rip himself would anticipate the levels he would reach on the platform. Starting a channel in this niche during this time frame would also give him a leg up as there was just not a lot of people doing these types of videos at the time, with even some of the larger creators before him soon having to live in his shadows. To contribute to his success, Rip was uploading just about daily, sometimes multiple times times per day. With consistent content and a seemingly never-ending supply of products to review and topics to cover, Rip Tripper's channel would begin growing at an exceptionally fast rate. Within the first year, he would also begin to make many changes to his content, including a better camera, microphone, lighting, and products. Knowing that the channel was pulling in likely little to no money at the time, it really showed the viewers that were around that he genuinely cared about the channel and was willing to invest for a better viewing experience. In 2013, we would really begin to see Rip Trippers climb in popularity, and this almost coincided with the spike in popularity of the vape industry. Considering that Rip was reviewing anything and everything at the time, a quick Google search for the items someone may have been interested in would almost always lead to his channel. The main issue with this sort of content was that none of it was really evergreen. These videos would die with the popularity of each product, forcing Rip to continually produce more videos or risk losing relevancy. This would be similar to video game content creators who make videos on new cosmetics or items. These types of videos tend to see spikes when the hype is new, but drop off as soon as the hype dies. This was especially true in a newer booming industry with fly-by-night companies popping up left and right in an influx of new innovative products being released daily. It would have been almost impossible to keep up with doing only this type of content, as predicting the next big thing was gradually getting more difficult. The climate of the industry around 2013 to 2014 was a very DIY heavy environment, and between many people looking to be using the latest and the greatest in the rise of competitive vaping, search terms like how to build coils and how to cloud chase were increasing in popularity. Rip Trippers would begin doubling down on tutorial videos to keep up with the demand of this climate, and this almost instantly paid off. With his ability to put things in a clear and easy to follow format, Rip Trippers would begin to see a large influx of subscribers to his channel. And by 2014, the vape industry was in full swing, and so was Rip Trippers' career, of course with more attention comes more hate. While the overall industry was idolizing this man, there was a small community of people in the shadows who would become vocal about their distaste, pointing out flaws in his content such as his format and over-the-top personality. If you were to watch through all of his review videos, hardly does he ever say anything negative and every product is quote-unquote the best product ever. This would cause a hit to his credibility as a reviewer, as most people who watch reviews do so to be steered in the right direction. But if every product is put up on a pedestal, it becomes more difficult to decide what is actually good and what is trash. This paired with the flanderization of his character would continue to build a dark cloud over Rip Tripper's head. To a large portion of his older community, they noticed changes in the way that he would make his content, where it began to feel more like a performance than a review. This same act that would begin driving away some of his older community would be the same act that attracted new viewers to the channel. To an outsider, this content was fast, concise, and entertaining. But looking in from another angle, Angle, this personality would feel fake and void of any genuine human connection. Despite these changes, Rip Trippers was growing faster than he ever did before and showed no signs of slowing down. Between 2014 and 2016, Rip Trippers grew immensely. Even with personality changes, it is hard to deny that his tutorial videos were also some of the best for the niche, and he was the go-to guy when needing to learn how to get it done. For now, the small community of haters were getting quieter, but in 2016, is really when the road would become bumpy and everything would be flipped on its head. Only a month into the year, Rip Trippers would post a video promoting a product that claims cured all side effects of vaping. This video in particular would 
outrage a large portion of his audience for several reasons as this video was posted only a few years after a video where he claimed that there were no side effects. That back and forth would leave his audience torn and misguided. It is as if he had suddenly been bombarded with dozens of side effects never discussed before and let his fans know about this conveniently with a video dedicated to promoting this miracle powder and the entire thing just seemed off. Regardless of your opinions and experience on the subject, you could see why this would put a bad taste in his community's mouth as no matter which way you flip the coin, it wasn't looking good. He was either lying about having side effects now or had been lying about having them before and with this, he had suddenly become a sellout in the eyes of his beloved fans. Many of his fans would become very vocal on various social media platforms and this would cause a drastic loss to his subscriber count. Three days after the incident, Rip Trippers would silently remove the video from his page and in the following video would not retract any statements. And instead of giving an apology, he would essentially justify what he said and claimed he did the video because he loved the product and he was not being paid to do so. But what I wanted to convey in this last video was the issues that I was having two years into it. And I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want, you know, to put a bad name on vaping. That's not what this was all about. What it was all about was my experiences and how I overcame those experiences. And I also want to state this, that back when I was having those issues, yeah, I could have thrown the towel in. I could have given up and quit vaping. But you know what? It's not my DNA. It is not my DNA to do that. And I am persistent. I found a way to nip it in the bud, fix it. If it wasn't for those issues that I was having, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. I am thankful because I have helped so many people out. I get emails on a daily basis. Thousands of people, thousands of people I've helped convert from cigarettes over to vaping. That's the point I was trying to make with that video. And I'm trying to convey that to you guys because I know some of you guys or gals are watching this right now and you're saying, oh man, I'm having these same issues. And you just don't know what the heck's going on. And I wanted to share those experiences that I had with you to help you nip it in the bud. And as far as that product goes, use something else. There's other electrolyte powder out there, but that was what worked for me. That's what still works for me. Been using it for two years and I stand by it and know the company is not paying me to do it. I love vaping. This is what it's all about for me. And the goal for me is to make cigarettes extinct. Shortly after, other conspiracies were coming to the surface that would further damage Rip Tripper's reputation. There were claims that he was accepting money from companies to do positive reviews and never disclosed any of this information. Others were also claiming that a large portion of his subscribers had been purchased. For these claims, there was insufficient evidence to back any of it up, but it wouldn't stop the keyboard warriors from making a dent. Following the events of this, those who left would not come back, but the channel would continue to grow, and on August 8th of 2016, the FDA would throw a wrench into the industry, pounding it with several regulations. Some of these regulations would include banning new products coming out after this grandfather day, along with banning the sale of products to anyone under the age of 18. This would specifically hit Rip Trippers hard, as less products to do videos on means less content. Another underlying issue that would emerge for Rip during this was the fact that his videos were appealing to a more younger audience, and many of the more mature people had a harder time stomaching his content due to the somewhat cringy nature of his personality that became more prominent over the years. Despite the hammer coming down on these types of creators in the industry, Rip Trippers would become the first and only Vaporview channel to reach 1 million subscribers by 2018. Unfortunately for Rip Trippers, the hardest pill to swallow was yet to come. The same year where Rip Trippers would achieve such an enormous milestone is the same year that YouTube would begin taking action against these types of channels. Creators across the board were getting hit with demonetization and community strikes, along with the majority of this content getting age restricted. This would cause a massive plummet for these types of channels in terms of viewers. Regardless, Rip Trippers would push on, but things would only continue to become more challenging. Following these changes would be the train wreck known as 2019. From anti-vaping propaganda to the introduction of new laws, fate would be sealing its own casket for Rip. In the United States, where a majority of Rip's viewers were from, they had upped the age restriction on these types of products. With the age going from 18 to 21, this would further thin out Rip Trippers' viewer base, as there were less people over this age range interested in his content. Rip Trippers would attempt to pivot his content, introducing more non-vape related videos on his channel, and even announced that he was quitting vaping altogether. Many of his viewer base were beginning to see a different side of Rip Trippers, which included a condescending and cocky attitude. He would then announce on June 8th, 2020, that he was done doing vape reviews altogether. What's going on guys? Rip Trippers back at you today with another video, and this video is, um, is a long time coming. I told you guys before I was probably going to be quitting vaping, and um, here we are. So just bear with me. I've gotten 
gotten a lot of hate, man. A lot of hate from a lot of you guys. And it really is sad to me. It's sad because of all the time and effort that I put into this. And a lot of you people jump jump to the conclusions. Oh, he's quitting because of this, or he's quitting because of this. Well, if you missed my video on how I almost died because I was so sick, I have an autoimmune disease, check it out. Link's down in the description. It does pertain to that, okay? The reason why I'm quitting. A lot of you guys don't know this. I was so sick. I couldn't eat anything. I lost a lot of weight. That's why I was so skinny. I'm weighed 180 now. I weighed 138 before. So, I mean, look, you see a difference, right? But anyways, once I got treated, okay, and I started feeling a lot better, the first thing that I did was I pulled back on the reviews because I wanted to take time off. I want to spend more time outside. And that's why a lot of these videos now I'm out in nature because I love it, man. It's the first time I've been able to connect with Mother Nature in a long time. So yeah, I pulled back from the reviews. I took like two months off. And after two months, I went back to it and I was like, no. Because you got to think, I got all that stuff out of my system. Oh yeah, I quit vaping. I didn't just quit the reviews. I quit vaping. A small portion of his community was supportive, but a majority of them would begin to walk out in masses. It would be less than two months before Rip Trippers announced that he would be returning to vape, but by this time, the damage was done. The first few videos back would receive a relatively decent amount of views, but it wouldn't take long for the remaining audience to begin dwindling. It was becoming apparent that Rip Trippers did not care about these videos or the industry, but more so missed the income that came along with it. He would attempt to create a second non-vape related channel in 2021, but based off the small percentage of his audience that followed, it was obvious that people were losing interest and he was becoming irrelevant. In 2022, his content is more obnoxious than ever and his viewer count per video has dropped over 99% in recent years. A staggering difference from the millions of views he once received. The question we should be asking is, did Rip Trippers kill his channel or did he simply fall victim to an ever-changing industry? I will leave that up to you to decide.